everybody welcome back to my channel since holiday season is here i thought it would be fun to have some lights in the background although i have this all year today's topic is the cemetery of the forgotten books or el cementerio de los libros olvidados if you don't know what i'm talking about la sombra del viento or the shadow of the wind el juego del ángel the angels the angels game and El Prisonero del Cielo, The Prisoner of Heaven. I read these books in Spanish, but I'm going to talk about them in English so we can all understand each other. Cemetery of the Forgotten Books. What a wonderful title that is. In the story, the Cemetery of the Forgotten Books is a library, a place where books are kind of saved. You know, books that are sort of endangered species <laughs> are placed inside that library to be protected from other people, maybe. So whenever a bookstore closes or a library closes, whenever someone throws a book away, when an author is chased and people are trying to destroy some books, those books end up in the cemetery of the forgotten book. The existence of this library is kept a secret. The secret goes on from generation to generation, from father to son, and so on. Whenever someone steps foot in the library for the first time, they have to follow some rules. They have to pick up one book, whichever they want, whichever whispers to their heart, and they have to protect that book no matter what. The Cemetery of the Forgotten Books is written by Carlos Ruiz Zafón or Carlos Ruiz Zafón. It takes place in Barcelona before, during, and after World War II. Let's start with book number one, The Shadow of the Wind. This book fools you at first sight. I mean like, Look at this. I thought it was a 300 page book and it turns out to be like 600. The paper is so thin. This is so unfair. Anyway, I didn't mind because Stefan's writing was amazing. It was vivid and descriptive. It was great. It gave me the full picture and tons of feelings and emotions I didn't even know I had. The story follows a young boy, Daniel, whose father takes him to the cemetery of the forgotten books when he was 10. We follow him as he grows up, he falls in love for the first time, gets his heart broken for the first time. We meet his best friend, his future wife. In one page, his future son is also mentioned. We meet his amazing father, and he excites us with his interest for the author of The Shadow of the Wind, the very book he picked up from the library, the Cemetery of the Forgotten Books, and had to protect it forever, forever. He did not do that. His journey searching for the author reveals a whole story of passion and intrigue. I'm holding my glasses. It was perfectly written. The main story started for me when the main character found out that all the books of this author were destroyed by a man who looked like a devilish character in the book The Shadow of the Wind. I think that's when the character decided to look for the author. I read this book in my summer break and there's a little part, a narration about France when the author um, Daniel was looking for had moved to France and I happened to be in Paris when I was reading that ever since I have this picture of the Notre Dame in my head whenever I think of the shadow of the wind let's charge my laptop and move on to the next book moving on to the angels game this book was totally different from the first one. It had a more serious vibe since the protagonist was much older, David Martin. He was the author of a book that ended up in the cemetery of the forgotten books. He was dying and he wanted to save his work, so he brought his book into the cemetery. The library. So the story follows this man who has used a pen name to publish his stories. He has also secretly helped his friend write his own novel. Then he finally published a book with his very own name, but nobody knows who he is, and the critics give him bad reviews because he was copying his friend's writing. This was a sad story. He lost his family at a young age, he lost his friend, the woman he loved, his career, and now his own life was slipping through his fingers. So one day, a mysterious man approaches him, a publisher, and offers him a fortune to write a religion. What I understand is that he was not asked to write a book that involved religion, but he was asked to write 
a religion, to create a religion. That's what I understood. So in this book, we have a whole new level of D. The author finds out eventually that this publisher had also approached the previous owner of the house he was living in, who had died under suspicious circumstances. So he goes around looking for answers and unravels untold truths, and slowly everyone he knows dies. What seemed weird at the time was some supernatural events occurring throughout the whole story, but since we're judging a book's logic according to the logic the book presents, if that makes any sense, it was kind of okay in the context of the story. Anyway, we also got to meet uh, Daniel's mother, Daniel from the first book, whose mother had died when he was very young, we finally meet her, which was very important for me for the whole picture. Last but not the least, the prisoner of heaven. Okay, so I need to be fair. As much as I love the other two books, this book kind of disappointed me. My very first thought was, oh no, only 300 pages. <laughs> the irony. Look at the sizes of these books. This one is 600 pages long. This one is 700 pages long, and this one is 300 pages long, because they used thicker paper. In what world is that fair? I was fooled. The third book of the series gave answers to the questions created in the two first books, but it stayed there. It was nothing more than that. The writing, again, was as good as the other two. The picturesque, the setting, the emotions. It even explained the supernatural parts in book two. The explanation given was a mental disorder of the protagonist, so now it totally makes sense. What disappointed me in this book is the plot. It was not enough. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this, but I can't help but compare it to the other two books. I feel like there was room for so many plot twists, which never came. I'm not sure if that's what Siphon wanted, if he had a strict deadline, or if he was just not interested in stretching the story. But this book did not meet my expectations. But since it was still a great book, I gave it four stars. But the other two got five stars. Anyway, that's it for today. Cemetery of the Forgotten Books. It's my favorite series of all time. Ever since I read these books, they are my number one go-to whenever I suggest books. You should totally read The Cemetery of the Forgotten Books. They're totally worth it. See you guys! And since the story takes place in Barcelona, adios muchachos, hasta luego. Don't forget to subscribe.